things, but we are, we are distracted uh, with other things. So let me encourage that the Lord will grant you the spirit of reception, that you will be receptive to the word of God. It will not be my word, but it will be the word of the Most High God. Our Father will lift up this session unto you. We we'll pray tonight that the ears of your people will be listening, their spirit will be receptive. Holy Spirit of God, you will have your way tonight in the name of Jesus. For those that need to be restored, you will restore them. For those that lack one thing or another, you are the God of abundance. Lord, you will make a way for them where there is no way. You are the one that increases. Father, increase your people. I release the spirit of joy over this meeting in the name of Jesus. You have made promises to your children. I pray, almighty God, that we shall fulfill those promises that you have made to us. We give you praise, almighty Father. Lord, I'm praying for the spirit of growth over this fellowship. I pray for as many as seeking you for direction, you will direct them. I pray for as many as are wrestling with decision, that Lord, you will grant them the grace of peaceful decision in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I pray for those who have gone today for even effective witnessing. I pray that those seed that they have sown on the streets of the United Kingdom, the Lord, those seeds will germinate in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. I pray for families, that Lord, there will be unity, that there will be agreement in the name of Jesus. Jesus says something in Luke 24, in verse 49, he said, tarry ye in Jerusalem until you are endured with power from on high. I pray that Lord, you will enrich the word of power in the lives of your people. Father, I humble myself that men will not hear my word, but they will hear from you. Bridle my tongue, O God, that that tongue will be like that of the ready writer. And the spirit of the most high God will take absolute and total control. Thank you, almighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen and amen. 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 Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining tonight by the special grace of God. We want to look at a few things. And uh, if I'm too slow or I'm too fast, let me know so I can slow down a little bit. And, you know, I've said to uh, your pastor that we're going to do it in, in two sessions because we might not be able to cover everything. I believe I have uh, close to 40 minutes. Please confirm. Confirmed. Okay. So yes, I believe I have close to 40 minutes. And in that 40 minutes, uh, I'm going to make an attempt to break down the spirit of discernment, uh, what it should mean to you as a believer, um, how you should covet after it as a believer, and, you know, a few other things, if you, we're going to take some examples from the Bible, how the spirit of discernment operate, and people that operated in the spirit of discernment, maybe by next week, I'll, be, I'll break down the rest for us. So what is the spirit? I titled this, the spirit of discernment part one. So the, 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 the spirit, the discernment is the ability to judge well through the help of the Holy Spirit. Get that down. Discernment is the ability for me as a believer to judge well through the help of the Holy Spirit. So somehow the Holy Spirit is involved to distinguish. This will help you to distinguish between good and evil. Every believer, this is my belief. Some other pastors believe might be different. This is my belief that every believer needs the power of discernment. Pastor, why do you say that? I say that because when we get to heaven, we're not going to need it. In fact, I say that to my congregation all the time. Every believer needs the power of discernment to discern 
between the clean and unclean, between good and evil, between right and wrong. You need that spirit of discernment because it becomes your ability to make wise decisions in difficult situations. You are making wise decisions in difficult situations. What is not clear to others around you becomes clearer to you because you are able to discern. Let me give you a quick example. Joseph, we're told when you read from Genesis that he was being sold to slavery. Now, check this out. Imagine that his brothers were able to discern that this guy was heading straight for prime ministership. Do you think they would have put him in the uh, gallop? They would not have given, they would not have put him there because then they could have been able to discern what kind of future he has. But somehow that helped what God, God that helped God to bring fulfillment to his life. In Deuteronomy 32, verse 28, it says, you are a foolish nation if you don't have discernment. It says it's a nation without sense. Deuteronomy 38, uh, 28, 20, 32, verse 28. It said they are a nation without sense. There is no discernment in them. In other words, this nation, these people, they're a nation without sense. Why? Because you don't have the spirit of discernment. That's how the Bible qualifies it. In Proverbs 11, 12, Proverbs 11, 12, it says, he that is void of wisdom despises his neighbor, but the man of understanding holdeth his peace. Because of the spirit of discernment, you are able to hold your peace. Sometimes we go into things and we never see the bigger picture. We only see the narrow view. Proverbs now says, he that is void of understanding, of, of wisdom, not a lot of people, not a whole lot of people have or get the wisdom out of every situation. He said, well, you despise, you will despise, you will do wrong things. You will take wrong decision against your neighbor. But a man of understanding, Hold that his feet. Now I'm I'm coming down to First Chronicles twelve thirty two. Just hold that scripture for a minute. I will come back there. Hold that scripture. First Chronicles, First Chronicles, First Chronicles, number thirty two, number twelve, verse thirty two. Now here is the thing that you will agree with me. Over the last 24 months, we have lived in, 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 in very, very interesting times, difficult times for some people. The grace of God is abound for some of us. It, is, it has become increasingly difficult, you know, uh, to come to understand certain situations. We have lived in times of uh, increased violence, we have lived in times of immorality, times of hardship, economic uncertainty in the Western world. I mean, even if you have been living in the cave in the hole, you will hear about this thing. Greater than economic problems, there are major spiritual problems in nations all over the world. I'm sure you are no stranger to Ukraine and, and Russia. So beloved children of God, we are living in dire, in dire times that we need more the spirit of discernment. And let me be frank with you. The church has not taken its position. That's just the truth. The church has not taken the rightful position we should take. So the spirit of discernment is 
what every believer should desire, what every believer should operate under. Now hear this, in around 2 Samuel, I'm coming down now to explain some things to you about some biblical foundation about discernment. Example, before David became king over Israel, there was there were a, a, a little bit of confusion in the Bible. Read Second Samuel, chapter two, chapter three, chapter four, chapter five, chapter six. Now David was about to be crowned as king of Israel. Saul was dead. And the Benjamites had other ideas about who should succeed David to the throne. But the other tribes were in favor of David as their king. Remember, he had been king over 400 useless men that met in the cave of Adullam. Where in the cave of Adullam, God taught David a whole lot of things. And so, they had met at Hebron to turn the kingdom over to Saul, the kingdom of Saul over to him. It was tense, very tense. That's why I say I'm coming back to talk about that first, that first Chronicles 12.32. Now hear this. Israel was, there was a need for great wisdom to discern in those times. They wanted to discern who should be king. They are here, the children of Issachar came up, came up knowing what needed to be done. Why? Because they had the spirit of discernment. They came up and said, hold on, there should, there, it should not be tense here. Hold on a second. It should not be, it should not be, uh, we should not be fighting against one another because God is here. And then they stepped in. Why did they step in? They stepped in to make sure that what was not done should be done. They had the spirit of discernment. Because the Bible says they understood the times. The word understanding in this context, when you read that, it means to have the insight to act with prudence. Let me say that again. They had the insight and could act with prudence. So the sons of Issachar had analyzed the times. They had discern the times and after discerning the times they perceived correctly so and they knew what to do because of why they understood what was happening without that understanding you couldn't they couldn't do that it was obvious to them that you know Saul had not been a good king his dynasty was established, even though, I mean, the Benjamites, they had other ideas. So David emerged out of what? The discernment of the children of Issachar. So the sons of Issachar knew exactly what to do. Now, before I continue about that story, let me give you eight, you know, maybe nine things the factors that matter on discernment. These are factors that matter regarding discernment. So I, I, I just want to pause on that story. I'll come back to it, but I want you, I, 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 I want to break it down just slightly further. My prayer for somebody is that God Almighty will give you the spirit of discernment that you will never be a victim of deceivers, false prophets, false teachers in the name of Jesus Christ. Because in these last days, there are going to be many. But hear this. 
factors about discernment, I think you ought to know. So maybe I'll give you five, maybe I'll give you seven. The quality of being able to grasp, comprehend spiritual things that are obscure to others. So it is the quality that I'm able to grasp a, a, a spiritual situation and or any other situation, able to comprehend it spiritually. And, you know, things that are obscure to others, you are able, it, it, the quality. And so people come to you for advice. People come to you for counsel. Why? Because you operate on that spirit of discernment. You are able. Look at that uh, king. They call him uh, king uh, in, uh, when I, I get the Bible passage, I'll tell to you Solomon. Yes, Solomon. These, those two women came to him. And they said, you know, uh, this woman said, let's eat a uh, child. And then we eat a child. And then she took my child. And then this is my child. And they were wrestling over that child. And God gave her a remark. God gave him a remarkable wisdom. He said, no, let's cut this child into her. He said, no. The one that owned the child said, no, don't let us cut her. And the king was able to discern. Number two. The skills in discerning is connected with spiritual maturity. The skills of discerning is connected with spiritual maturity. A man who has not matured spiritually is incapable of discerning. Is incapable of it. So remember, the skills of discerning is connected to spiritual maturity. You must be spiritually mature before you can operate it. Anybody that has no understanding of deep things of the spirit is incapable of discerning. That is why those it is only those who are spiritually matured that can quickly identify Christians who are erring and call them to order. You know, we err all the time. And it is those who are spiritually mature, they can call others, they can call them to order. Remember, uh, judges, when you read Judges, uh, Judges 13, Judges 14, Judges 16, you see the incredible story of, uh, of uh, Samson. And, you know, Manoah and his wife, they were childless for a long time. And I don't know where the lady went. Uh, Manoah's wife went somewhere. The angel saw him and said, hey, you are going to have a child, you know, and, uh, you know, the child was to be dedicated from the womb as a Nazarite. So a Nazarite, which entails restrictions, you know, his life was supposed to be curtailed in a certain way. So what happened? So now this child will be born. When his father was told, when his father was told, when Manoah's wife told him, Manoah's wife said we must, they needed to discern. Let us have proper instruction how we should order the life of this child. He said, Let's, we need to know how we should order. He wanted to discern whether this was from God or this was not from God. So as a believer, we need that. Number three, every believer should exercise discernment. Every believer should exercise, whether, even if it is only your own affairs, you should be able to discern the objectives of people. You should be able to discern your relationship with people. Those who are, take, who are friends with you because of what they can get from you or those who are friends with you because of how you exchange things between each other. 
You know, some people, they are friends with you out of what they can get from you. And the day you stop giving them what you are giving them, that is when they stop to be your friend. So we need to be able to discern everybody around you. You should be able to, there are some people with devilish spirit, with crowd spirit, that you should be able to discern. Remember, remember the definition? You remember that? I'm sure you remember. It's your ability, your spiritual ability to be able to judge through the help of the Holy Spirit. Judge means everything that is around you. It's your ability, your spiritual ability. Oh, I discern that I should be very careful with it. I discern. David was about to go into a battle in 1 Samuel chapter 17. He said, let no man, you know, everybody, they were murmuring, they were doing all kinds of things. He said, come here. 1 Samuel 17, 32. He said, let no man's heart fail him because of me. He said, because me, I'm ready to go into battle. Stop looking at me and say, ah, this boy is small. We're not sure. No, if, you're, if you're afraid, just say you're afraid and go back. He declared, he said, let no man heart fail him with these Philistines. I'm ready to go. I came to see that David I mean, he was in full operation, spiritual, spiritually. He knew. Number four, know the holy, know your holy God intimately. Know your God intimately. When you know God intimately, you will know that certain things God cannot do. You will know. So there are, I say to people all the time that there are certain things we don't need prophet for. We don't need, there are certain things, oh, I need a prophet to tell me this. I need a prophet to tell me that. There are things you don't need prophet for. When you read John 10, 10, you will know that you don't need, you don't need prophecy for certain things. The devil comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. So anything that doesn't add abundance to my life is of the devil. And I must wake up and, and destroy. He said the devil comes to kill, to steal, to destroy. How does the devil come? The devil can come through drugs. The devil can come through heavy drinking. He's destroying. Is your life progressing? Your life is not progressing. Because alcohol is now the order of the day. Drugs is now the order of the day. It comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. You don't need prophecy for that. Because there is an item that wants to kill you. That wants to steal your joy. That wants to take from you. That wants to destroy you. Then clearly it is from the devil. Has nothing to do with God. Nothing at all. Somebody made a ploy to kill you. You don't need to, you don't need to, you already know that you should dig out your spiritual we, uh, weaponry and start firing and start praying and make prayer a weapon. When you see witchcraft handwriting on the wall, you deal with it. You deal with this straight away. He's coming to, he has, an, he has an agenda. When you see satanic arrows, you return it straight. You don't need to, you don't need to be a gentleman. When you want, when you want God to, to quicken the spirit that is inside you. See something that afflicts your life. What are you waiting for? Deal with it. Amen, somebody. Don't let me get excited here. Number five. Amen. For you to operate in the spirit of discernment, or I'm talking about things that matter, you must be a lover of the truth. People who do not love the truth 
cannot operate in discernment, regardless of whether they tell you they have the spirit of discernment or not. Regardless, oh, I have the spirit of discernment, I can discern. If they do not love the truth, truth, this is very critical. It must be somebody that stands up the truth because sometimes you will discern and your discernment will not be popular. But you need to stand up. I remember several years ago when I just came in the ministry. That's why I said I can't be a politician because it'll be a problem. I was going to a fellowship and my pastor then did something that was wrong. And everybody wanted to sweep it under the carpet. I mean, it's something he went to jail for eventually. But a lot of people wanted to pad him up. But I did some private, well, I mean, I call it private investigation, but I was the one doing the investigation myself. And I confirmed a few facts. And the Holy Spirit gave me full conviction. And so I told folks, I am not a part of it. I will not be a part of this. So now, to me, it wasn't, I mean, as it turns out, then it wasn't a popular decision. But I said, I have full conviction. And you know the funny thing? A lot, of, a, a, a lot of our members at that time followed in that direction until the police now re released their investigation. And they said, oh, bro, Peter was right all along. I said, I know. It's all of you that don't know what was wrong. Let's call a spade a spade. Call must be a lover of the truth. If it's a spade, call it a spade. Don't say it's an agricultural implement. It's no agricultural implement. If it's a spade, it's a spade. Let's call it that. Oh, uh, it, that's a tool used for agricultural implement. No, it's a spade. Just call it a spade. The true word, lover of the truth. Humility, let me come to that. Number six, is that number six? Yeah, somebody tell me whether they, I, I said too much. Number six, number six. humility. For where there is pride on display, deception will follow. Wherever you see pride, deception is about to follow. Discernment cannot operate there. The spirit of discernment cannot. These are factors that matter if we're talking about discernment. You must be a humble person. You must be. Number seven, and I'll stop there to continue because I want to give you just three nuggets. How am I doing for time? Okay, I got 10 minutes. Maybe I'll give you two nuggets on, on those children of Isaka. Pastor, How do you go, go for the free, go for the free. Okay, okay. So now, number seven is inner witness of the Holy Spirit. Ooh. Inner witness of the Holy Spirit. We must learn to understand the still small voice, that small voice that speaks to us because it will save us from deception every now and again. You know, there's an adage where I come from. It says, if you don't know that you are lying, he said, the person you are lying to knows that you are lying. Did you get that? So if you are talking to me and you, you are lying and you think that I don't know that you are lying, the person you are lying, the you who is lying, you know that you are lying. So the, I'm talking to talk about the inner witnessing of the Holy Spirit. There's no way you can discern without the, the presence of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is vital, very vital in our education about discernment. 
Now, let's look at these folks. Why did God actually, why did God choose them in a way? Why, why is, why, you know, as a believer, can I convert the spirit of discernment? Can I convert it? So I want to look at the difference between the children of Issachar because at the end of the day, one of the reasons why we're talking about discernment is that we need it in the body of Christ. You need it as a church. You need it as a believer. You need it as an individual. As a nation, we need it. So why is it that these people, that these people, why did they, why they, were they able to decide what was different about them? I want us to go into that. And maybe next week, we're going to look at where John began to receive the revelation to discern what was happening in the seven churches. We look at that next week, but that's by, just, to, just to give you some teasers. Because John, I'm sure you know that in the book of Revelation chapter two, John was able to discern and take to each church what was wrong. Why? Because he had, you see, Paul spoke to saints, but John spoke to leaders. That's one thing that the body of Christ did not understand. He spoke to you and I, leaders of tomorrow. Number one, the children of Issachar. Why did they have that spirit of discernment? They had the ability of a strong body. They are strong body bearers. People that bear burdens on behalf of others, God is able to give them the spirit of discernment so they can guide the church. So you find out some people, they are just believer. I mean, he tried to be like the pastor, but he's not really the, he cannot really be the pastor because he doesn't have that spirit to bear the burden of others. A pastor must be a, 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 a pastor. He might not even be ordained a pastor, but he's able to bear the burden of others. If you can't carry the burden of others, you can never operate with the spirit of discernment. You must be able to carry the burden of others. You must be able, you know, how is this one doing? How is that one doing? I hope all is well with that person. I hope all is well with that, with that individual. I hope they are doing well. You carry the burden of others. But really, the burden is not is on the cross. You are simply presenting it to God. That's what you are doing. So those children of Issachar, one, remember, they are body bearer. Genesis 49, verse 14. Isaka is a strong ass coaching down between two bodies. So they are great body bearers. Number two, ability and readiness to work hard. Some people, they don't have the ability, they don't have the readiness to work out, even in undesirable condition. I'm sure when you went on evangelism today, there are some people who are supposed to come, but you are probably, they probably look at it, it's too cold. Where there is a, a, a soul waiting for you to sow a seed. There are, listen to me, children of God. There are people that God are attached for you to get to heaven. That if I can minister to them, you will not get anywhere. But if you open your mouth to talk to them, they will just follow you. So they, they, they don't have, they just look and say, oh, I have better things to do than go and sit in the rain or in the, in the, in the, in the sun or go and stand in the street corner trying to do uh, one thing, uh, trying to live their way. These people, well, if they want to born again, they can be born again. I don't need to go there. Evangelism is part of the church. So we need to go do it. 
and people that do it even under undeniable conditions. They are showing their ability and readiness to work hard. The children of Issachar showed that. They showed that. And God gave them the grace and the wisdom to understand what Israel ought to do. In that bunch, they were the only people that discerned. Amen, somebody. Amen. Now, not only did they have the ability, they were soldiers, good soldiers, able to go to war. Listen to this. Listen to this. A lot of people might not have read it. Let me read Numbers chapter 1. Numbers chapter 1. Let me read verse 28 to you. If you are getting blessed, give me a wave there. Let me see you. Amen. Do a wave or click on a wave. Amen. If you are begging, if you are getting blessed, if you are asleep, I pray for the Holy Spirit to wake you up. <laughs> 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 Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Right. Amen. It says the children of Isaka, Numbers 128, by their generation, after their families by the house of their fathers, according to the number of names from 20 years old upward, all they were able to go forth to war. Did you see that? These children of Issachar, their generations, from the age of 20 upwards, they can be nominated to go to war. That's their generation. I didn't write it there. The Bible, right? the Bible wrote it there. The children of Issachar, by their generation, they knew them as readiness to work hard. Soldiers, good soldiers. Because a good soldier can endure hardship. A good soldier, in 2 Timothy 2.4, they don't get themselves entangled. Some Christians are entangled in all forms of messes. What he said, what she said, what he does, what she does. What's the matter with you with what you are doing? You need to concentrate on the spirit of the living God. Amen. You yeah. need God in your life. You don't need to be entangled. We get ourselves in entangled in things that you are not supposed to be entangled. Now, here is the thing, children of God. Anything, you know, this is why I don't quarrel with people. As so you say, somebody doesn't want to come to church, that's our business. That's his business. I move on. Now, here is the thing. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 2. No man that entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who are chosen him as a soldier. When they are choosing people, they don't choose people who get entangled. Here is the thing, children of God. Anything that does not affect my going to heaven, I hardly worry about it. Now, it's going to be a big problem between you and I if it affects my getting to heaven. We worry and we get ourselves entangled in things that don't matter. In subject matters that Christians should not be caught discussing. In, in matters that you shouldn't be, it's not your business. You just mind your own business. It is you and God, and you are going to heaven. Take your Christian life seriously. Seriously. Number three. Let me give you number three. So remember, number one is strong burden bearers. Number two, ability and readiness to work hard. That's where the soldier come in. Number three, and I will close in a minute. Number three, steadfastness. These folks were steadfast. You can put valiant men in court. Valiant men. Let me read this for you. First Chronicles chapter seven. First Chronicles chapter seven, verse five. And their brethren among all the families of Issachar were valiant men, mighty men, 
reckoned in all their genealogies, four score and 700, 7,000, beg your pardon. So they counted them and they said, yes, first Chronicles 7, 5. They were steadfast men. They didn't blow hot and cold. They are not in today, out tomorrow. They are not blowing up and down like a yo-yo. They are not an emotional mess. You know, they, they, they understood. They were not manipulators. These were men that were steadfast. Steadfast in nature, steadfast in ability, not self-serving. They didn't worry so much about themselves. Those who went beyond the ordinary, uh, they, are not, they are not addicted to mediocrity at all. They were ready to go all out for God. Beloved, these folks, we're not talking about folks that were just casual Christians. No, that's not who we're talking about. Those are not the steadfast ones, not just casual Christians. I will serve God when it's convenient for me. Oh, and yet you want to operate in the spirit of disarmament? No, that's not going to be possible. These are strong soldiers. These are, they are, they are strong in nature. They are steadfast in nature. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 2 says, every way, every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord thundereth his heart. It can be right in your eyes, but the spirit of the Son, God only give it to who he wants to give it to. I want to pray for you after that, because I don't want to go into the spirit of discernment in the, 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 the gift of the spirit. Well, I already mentioned Solomon to you. And, and, and I just wanted to start looking at John. Next week, we'll look at that John. That is the need of discernment in the life of a believer. The need for discernment in the life of a believer. We'll deal with that next week. But by your heart, let me pray for you. Bow your heart where you are. Let me pray for you. Father, Lord, we lift up these saints into your hands. Thank you for the word of life that we have been fed with at your table. Thank you. We pray that this word of life will come alive in every particular of tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. For as many as desire to operate in this spirit, lift up your hands towards me where you are. Amen. Lift up your hands towards Amen. me. Yes. Amen. I believe that in the spirit realm, there is no distance barrier. Just lift up your hands where you are. Amen. Connect with the spirit of God. Come on. Connect with the spirit of God. Connect with the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Father, in the spirit realm, there is no distant barrier. I connect your children with the spirit of discernment. Amen. And as they connect with it, Amen. those old struggles are over. Lord, your hand is pointing towards the Calvary. You are the God of mercy. I pray that the power of the Holy Spirit will illuminate every force of darkness that has prevented discernment to operate and let the power of God take total control in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. I come against the spirit of death in the name of the Father. I come against demons, principalities, and power. Amen. The hinder, I come against destiny Amen. killers. I come against hijackers of destiny. Amen. In the 
in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. I discern them today in the name of Jesus. I cancel poverty activators, powers that activate poverty. They make you to lose your job. They make your business not to go in the right way. I decree, I stand as a prophet of the living God. I destroy their foundation over your life in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You will not go backward. Every backwardness, every stagnancy, I cancel it in the name of Jesus. I stand by God's authority. Amen. Whatever has been confusing you, hindering you from making successful decisions, I stand by God's authority. I destroy that bitterness, that unforgiveness in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let the light of God shine. Yeah, I see somebody seeing the light. As you close, I see you seeing the light. It's coming into you right now. Amen. Yes. The powers of darkness, manipulators will not manipulate your dream. Amen. Manipulators will not manipulate your life. You will not follow satanic programming. Every calendar of evil to take your life, every Amen. timetable of sickness, let it be broken in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, we thank you. We glorify your name. We give you praise. Holy Spirit, I bless you. I give you praise. I strengthen Pastor Evo, O oh Lord, in Lord, his this ministry to reach out onto the streets, to be able to go out and speak to those who alcohol have taken hold of their life. Father, we arrest the spirit of alcohol over this meeting tonight. Thank you, Jesus. We arrest the spirit of drug addiction. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. I want to pray for a lady. You find yourself in playing in and around water. When you look at yourself and you find yourself dreaming about things that have to do with water, it is like a water spirit. It is like a water spirit, marine spirit Amen. that are in operation. I pray as those hands are lifted up, let God deliver you tonight in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Every affliction against you will not prosper in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you because you are God. Thank you because you are God Almighty. You will not end up in rags because that spirit of poverty is defeated. You will not end up in rags. Thank you because you are God. Wicked powers, wicked powers are paralyzed against you. Wicked powers will have no effect against your business. Wicked powers will have no effect against your career in the name of Jesus. Thank you, almighty God, for who you are. I cover your marriages with the blood of Jesus. I pray that Almighty God will continue to release his joy in your marriage, his peace in your marriage. If you are believing God for the bone of the bone, your flesh of your flesh, let God Almighty surprise you in this year in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I pray for somebody today, whatever appear iron-like, iron-like situation, let God break it for you in the name of Jesus. God will give you a solution in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You know, after a while, they went to Joseph and they went to get him because Pharaoh had a bad dream. And they told Pharaoh, they, they told Pharaoh that there's a guy who is in the prison and they brought him out. And what did Joseph said? He said, for tomorrow, the Lord will give us an answer of peace. 
I don't know what you are believing God for a crucial decision on, but I stand as a prophet to declare the Lord will give you an answer of peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, let God open peace over that decision. How do you know after you have made a decision that is from God? The way you know is when you make the decision, you are going to be at peace. Mm. You'll be at peace with yourself. There's some decisions you make, you will not really be at peace with that decision. That shows you, this is, I'm just giving you a hint about the spirit of discernment. It will show you that it's not from God because when you make that decision, you'll be restless in your spirit. At least that's one way that the spirit of discernment will start to operate. I pray that as you make that decision, let Lord God Almighty confirm within your spirit that you'll be at peace. The Lord bless and keep you, and may he cause his face to shine upon you. God bless you, my brother. Thank you, Be, Jesus. Continue Thank to walk you. in faith. Thank you, in Jesus' Jesus. name. Amen. 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 God Amen. bless you. God bless you, Pastor. That was absolutely wonderful. You know, that was a big, heavy teaching. I can't wait for um, part two myself. You know, um, and, I'm, and I'm glad that, you know, I, I had the spirit of reception you know, armored on me tonight to receive, hallelujah, Amen. to receive that Amen. word of God, because, you, you, you know, in, as you said, quite rightly, you know, in, in the life of a believer, we need to have the spirit of discernment. And like mm -hmm. you said, quite rightly, you, you know, we're only going to get that with spiritual maturity. Mm -hmm. you know, so it, it, it's, um, it's so powerful, you know, we need to understand, you know, the difference between good and evil. Like you said, we need to understand between unclean and clean. We need to understand, you know, <laughs> where, where we need to operate yeah. in this realm, you know, and um, or of course, we need to make wise decisions. Mm -hmm. We need to make wise decisions. Glory. Particularly, Glory. particularly Glory. when situations are unclear. You know, you, 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 you know, and you said it, it's, it's like, um, you know, it's having or showing good judgment, uh -huh. you, know, you, you know, and uh, I, I believe that, you know, it's, um, you know, here tonight, you know, there's, there's some, there's some people on, 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 on this platform tonight that want to have that spirit. Amen. They're fully aware, Amen. Uh, they're, fully aware um, they're operating on their own understanding. Uh -huh. So, you know, I'm going to challenge, I'm going to challenge some individuals here tonight. Amen. The challenge, you know, it is, it's about a challenge. You know, it's about, you know, um, stepping up and stepping in, you know, and, uh, you know, I believe, you know, you, 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 you mentioned a few um, areas there, you know, but I believe that the, the, the Holy Spirit is, is, is asking me to, to come in and press on the in, you know, you know, about, you know, particular areas where decisions need to be made. And there's a lot of unclarity. You know, you see, God is not a God of confusion. Mm -hmm. He's a God of order. Mm -hmm. So I believe, you know, you know, tonight, you know, I'm going to challenge anyone there. If they're in between mm. that decision process, or in between looking for some answers. We want to pray for you tonight. Yeah. Particularly. We want to pray into that situation right here, right now. Amen. 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 So if you want to do that, please raise your hand. Is that you, Maxine? Okay. Yes, yeah, me. Yeah. I believe I saw your hand up. Is, it, is your hand up there, Maxine? Yeah, it was. First. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Listen. I think you've got cost I've got, cost I've, got, I've got five. I've got five up here. Now, this is serious here. I've got Amen. five people up here at the moment. I'm going to go Amen. for a second call here because I believe this is this is this is you, you, you know listen. I've made wrong turns and it's been costly mm. because of not having the humility mm. to say I needed some help along this. Mm. 
to discern. Yeah. To not having the humility to say, mm -hmm. can you pray for me? Mm. To not having that humility where I'm dumbfounded by the illness when I'm surrounded by people and I can't even speak. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I want to pray for you tonight. I want to pray for you tonight. You know, the second call, the second call, the second call. I want the Holy Spirit here to minister your hearts right now and, yes. and, and really search your hearts and your minds right now. Amen. Hey, listen, Amen. You know, is there something Amen. that I want some more clarity on today and I want some prayer? Yeah. I want to release right now, right now. I want to be yes. broken from it right now. Yes. Amen. Thank you, God. Thank in you, the Jesus. name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank, thank you, Joy. Sir. Thank you, Joy. Thank you, Joy. Thank you, thank you, Joy. Thank you, Lord. Okay, thank you, Lord. Maxine, you were first. Far away. Um, I can't remember. What was it for? This is funny. I mean, decision, sorry. Decision. I... decision. Sermon. The sermon. Decision. Yeah. Um, that's what I really decision, need. Yeah. I need. Yeah, I'm... I'm... I'm, I'm not walking by faith. I think it's because I think if I read the Bible more, then I think I'll get more discernment. Because when I was reading the Bible a lot more, I was getting more understanding mm. from seeing other people in a different way. Yeah. But I, I don't do that all the time. I don't do it enough. So I think that's where I'm a weak believer. Walking by faith. Feeling Is that people. right? Feelings of inadequacy. Okay, I'll take that. Costas, thank you, Maxine. Sorry. Yeah, good evening, everybody. Um, yeah, thank you, Peter. Thank you, Ivor. Um, yeah, I've, I'm in between decisions at the moment. Um, it's been on my spirit for a while um, in relation to my career. Um, I've got a very good job. My wife is very happy with my job. I'm very happy with my job, but I've been offered another job in a different drug and alcohol rehab, um, more money, it's not even about the money, it's more an exciting um, project working with uh, my friends. But I want to live by faith and not by sight. And go mm -hmm. to this new rehab, which mm -hmm. possibly could not be successful, you know, because it's a new business. On the other hand, my wife wants me to stay where I am because it's safe, you know. So that's been on my spirit um, quite a few months in the process of this new rehabilitation uh, center being, uh, you know, getting off the ground. So that's where I'm at right now. Thank you. Okay. Is, it, is it opened yet, this new center, or has it been in the process? Um, yeah, it's, I've been to see it. I've been to see the building, been shown around, had discussions. Um, I'll have a lot more responsibility and all that, but it's, yeah. it's opening in about four, four months' time. I've been about four months now. Mm. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, brother. That's brilliant. We're gonna, gonna pray for that. That's good. John. Hello, Arthur. Yeah, it's just what, what I was talking about earlier about um, um look, knowing what to say to people in the LGBT uh, community and kind of standing on God's word. I, I know that it's meology rather than theology, uh, what I'm doing. And um yeah. I I just I just wanna I I want to say around it. I, I, I know what it says in the Bible, I believe what it says in the Bible, but as I say, my my best mate is gay and and um yeah, it's like the church we came from that, that closed down was kind of welcoming, loving, and, and he felt accepted. Uh, but for the first time, because churches ain't like that, it's like the LGBT community really distrust the church. Um, yeah. Yeah, because of what it says in the Bible. But um, I'm, I'm just torn with my decision. And um, it's not I'm torn. I'm not brave in... I haven't got discernment. Um, around being honest um, and we can talk about anything me and, me and my friend we can talk about anything except for this I mean we do talk about it it's like a skirt around it do you know what I mean it's like yeah God loves you Jesus loves you uh, do you know what I mean it's like and I know that's true but yeah there, there's a whole side that I, I believe is a split 
in the church. Do you know what I mean? That some churches are kind of accepting and other, other churches, LGBT people, will not go in there because they feel pushed out and, yeah, kind of damages them. Do you know what I mean? It's like, I haven't got no clear... I know, I know the Bible's clear, but I, I'm not clear. Mm. Mm. Clary, Clary, I'll take that. Thanks, John. Okay, Nazarene. Hello. Yeah, I'd like um, some point a decision about letting go of a relationship or not. I think, if I'm honest, I think I've already had a little bit of discernment or conviction or God speaking to me. Um, but I lean too much on my own understanding and um, I'm only coming to a place of trying to be obedient to God and following him full heartedly, heartedly and um, partnering with him. And I think I'm just finding it difficult to let go. I know what I need to do. Um, and so then I become unsure. So um, I don't want to lean on my own understanding. I want to obviously... Um, follow from God but I did take what you said God will help me in my decision he will answer tonight and in the morning I will have peace and keep walking in faith when you that for myself so um yeah yeah (laughs) well done well done sister God bless Leon thank you yeah, um, I, I, uh, yeah, I was just say, like, I need, I need uh, prayer and, um, I mean, I need to get more discernment. I mean, in my trust with the Lord, like, uh, I trust in God. I mean, putting my trust in Him, uh, there's been some uh, struggles, like, I mean, in my career, like, I mean, I've got good qualifications, I've got, uh, like, good opportunities to go forward in, uh, like, um, to continue to, like, get a, a good job and, you know, to go forward. I've I've been struggling in some areas, like doing some driving lessons and things like that. And I'm sort of going into in a position where, like, um, I'm not going to give up, you know. And there's there's been some, like, different strengths that I've gone through in money situations and that and everything else. But it's all down to, like, uh, I don't know where it is, but, I mean, there's, like, a lot of deception around it and things like that. But I don't know where that's coming from. But I know that's not... That's like the enemy. The enemy tries to come in and uh, put faults in. You know, if I'm doing the right thing or if I'm doing the wrong thing, and these kind of things. But I need discernment. Can you hear me, please? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can we keep it to the point? I've got ten people. I can hear you. Yeah. Yeah. I need to keep it to the point. Can you keep it to the point of what you want us to get close? Well, keep it to the point. Yeah. Eight, nine people. Eight, nine past ten. Yeah, just career, career, <laughs> career, and uh, yeah, career and uh, job, job, job seeking, career, job seeking. and okay. workplace. You know, I mean, uh, getting a good position. Okay. Career, job seeking, clarity, trust. I've got. Yeah, clarity. Yeah, clarity. Brilliant. Clarity and trust. Well, amen. I'm in, I'm in, Leon. You're on mute, ever. You're on mute, ever. You're on mute. You're still on mute, ever. Still on mute. Thank you, Dick. Can we keep it straight to the point? Clarity of what you want. Clarity. Gemma, you're next. Sorry, to call me, either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Um, yeah. So basically, I just want a clarification on um, or discernment on uh, the relationship with my mum. She lives opposite me. Um, basically, there's always uh, a spiritual warfare going on uh, where she, the spirits work through her to constantly attack me and keep me in a place of trauma. But then, because I'm a single parent, she's the only form of support that I've got, and I just feel trapped because this is just a constant cycle that I'm on, and I don't know how to deal with this situation or how I move forward, and also my career. Um, I've got, I just, yeah, got no idea about where I'm going, what to do. It's just so much confusion. Amen. Thank you, Gemma. Beautiful. Malcolm. 
Uh, yeah, I'd just like to pray uh, that God will remove the obstacles that are in the way that prevent me from getting on with the mission that he has put on my heart. Beautiful. Thank you. KB. Hiya. Um, yeah, can I please have prayer around um, uh, going to university and also around my marriage, please? Thank you. University, marriage. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you. Joy, I've got you. I've got you earlier on. Do you, do you want to? Um, can you speak? You, you said you couldn't speak earlier. Can you speak? I've got you in the chat. So I'll take James next. Thanks, Joy. Uh, yeah, yeah, mine's just just around, um, you know, that discernment uh, in in relationships uh, and this, the ability to kind of like see through, see through any, uh, you know, any, any falseness, not necessarily of the other people, but m more in my head really mm. just, to, you know, just to clear my mind really so that I can perceive what's going on clearly uh, and discern discern what, what you know what friendships relationships to to push forward with which ones not to you know and and uh, the quicker the quicker the faster uh, I, I can discern that um, the better in all areas you know what I mean career friends family you know um what have you so uh yeah uh, I, I pray that um amen thank you, uh, thank you for the um oh Lan, what's your name um alaniran peter alaniran cheers peter, peter. peter is fine yeah. <laughs> <laughs> god bless you thank you james clarity relationships all types of relationships it's a good one erica good to see you on it tonight Good evening, Ivor. Um, yes, please, I would like discernment around honesty with others. Right. Um, mm. yeah. I feel, yeah. I, you know, I want to be unafraid, um, you know, not having fear of rejection when being honest with other people because I recognise that when I'm not being honest with others, I'm, prevent, I'm presenting a, an illusion. Um, a false mm. sense of reality. And by doing that, I'm unable to discern true relationships or true yes. friendships or true mm. understanding. So yes. I need strength in not being frightened to be honest with others. Mm -hmm. Not being frightened to be honest with others. That's beautiful. Okay, let's just invite the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit of Holy God. Spirit. Holy Spirit. Yes. Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, Holy Spirit. Holy uh -huh. Spirit, you heard the cry of your people here. Mm. You heard the cry of your people. Father, in the name of Jesus, Isaiah 30, 21 says, yes. 30, 21 says, your ears will hear mm. a word behind you. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. That this is the way. Walk mm. in it whenever you turn to the right or to the left. Hallelujah. Mm. Glory be to the Lamb of God. To enable us to make the right decisions mm. on any issue. First of all, we have to do two things. We have to have an awareness of what's around us and around that situation. The second thing we must understand is any of these decisions going to lead us to sin? Mm. Mm. So when, I'm, when, we're, when we're talking about the decision-making process that we need to make, are any of these decisions, first and foremost, are going to lead us to sin? Because straight away, there's your answer. The second thing we need to have is understanding. Father, we're going to pray for awareness. We're going to pray for understanding. And mm -hmm. we're going to pray for action. Three prayer mm -hmm. points that we need. So, Father, to enable us to make right decisions, thank you, Lord, to make our mind of God on particular issues. Thank you, Lord, that there's nothing beautiful as walking according to the Lord's directives in all areas of our life. Understanding and following the will of God amounts to a living a life of heaven and earth. As it says mm. in Colossians 1.9, for this mm. cause we also 
since the day heard it. Do not cease to what? Pray for you and the desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and all spiritual understanding. These prayer points are important. We need to understand these exploits in the kingdom of God is, is for the people that know God and will be strong to do his exploits. Father, mm -hmm. in the Jesus, through wisdom, and though wisdom is a house built by understanding, it is established. And Paul encourages us not only to ask for it, but to pray for it. We need to pray for wisdom, to build on the understanding, to establish it. Father, we thank you, Lord, as we start this, that God will make his way plain before us. He will make his way plain before you. He will give you wisdom and the understanding that you need right now, that our ears shall hear a word behind thee in the mighty name of Jesus, that this is the way we will walk and we will walk in that way. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just pray that the secret things belong to you, O God, as it says in Deuteronomy 29, 29. But thou, the things which are revealed belong to us and to his children. Hallelujah. Forever that we may do all the words. Thank you, Father, for the revelation. Thank you, Father, for the revelation of the power of the Holy Spirit, because you said, ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find, knock and the door shall be opened. Oh, Father, make your way plain before our face tonight on these issues, mm -hmm. these issues that we just brought to you, these issues of concerns of your people, these issues of concerns of your children. Father, we thank you right now in the mighty name of mm -hmm. Jesus that we can open our eyes, open our eyes to see all that we should see on these issues in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you will teach us the deep secret things that you want to reveal in us right now in the name of Jesus. We praise your name. We pray for that spiritual understanding, Lord. Lead us in that spiritual understanding, Lord. Lead us. Let us know all what we should do about these issues right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, Lord, that you remove Anything from the persisted, buried grudges, half acknowledging the enmity against anyone or everything that can block us from our spiritual vision right now. Father, I pray that eyes are open right now in the name of Jesus. I pray that ears are open to receive you right mm. now in the name of Jesus. Father, I bind the activities of the enemy in the name of Jesus right now. In the name of I Jesus. bind the activities of lust, ungodly family pressure. I bind the activities of attachment to the wrong choices right now. I bind the activities to spiritual blindness right now. I bind the activities to spiritual deafness right now. I bind the activities to spiritual dumbness right now in the name of Jesus. I bind ungodly patience right now in the name of Jesus ungodly infatuation right now in the, in the name of Jesus. Any demonic manipulation in dreams and visions, I bind it right now in the name of Jesus. Any confusing revelations, I bind it right now in the name of Jesus. Any unprofitable advice, I bind it right now in the name of Jesus. Oh God, you who reveal the secret things to us, no unto us, your choices, for us in these issues in the name of jesus holy spirit open our eyes help us to make the right choices in these decisions right now in the name of jesus thank you jesus for your presence and the good testimonies that will follow we pray mm -hmm. in the spirit now let's just pray in the spirit over this right now in the name of jesus father in the name of jesus oh yes we find up the strong man come on now we find up in jesus name we find up Break off all fear right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. You've made oh, in the name of Jesus. Pray in the name of Jesus. Break off the Lord. 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 Break off the L
name of Jesus. As we come against them, in the name of Jesus. Give them, Lord, you are a God of all the in the name of Jesus. Give them poverty right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. The power of the Holy Spirit to come and do the work within the self to us in Jesus' name. Right now, we stand in the position of yes. God, and we thank you, Lord, that it's in your hands that your will will be done. Yes, your Lord. will will be done in the mighty yes, name of Jesus. Thank yes, you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank uh, Pastor, did you want to close with um, a closing prayer based on what we just discussed around all those situations? One yeah. prayer before we go. Our Father, we just thank you. We glorify your name. We give you praise because you are God. A lot of people are struggling with decisions. Mm. Decisions to know what we ought to do. But I know that you are a God that gives an answer of peace. Joseph said to Pharaoh, tomorrow the Lord will give us an answer of peace. Mm. And so I pray that you will receive peace as you make the right decision in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every manipulation yes, that wants to manipulate your decision, I nullify yes, in Lord. the name Amen. of Jesus. Every influence, Amen. external influence, Amen. evil association, Amen. we nullify in the name of Jesus. I surround your life with a wall of fire Amen. to surround you. That in your decision, the Lord will uphold you. In your decision, the Lord Almighty will help you. Bible says, He that though the Lord has helped us. I pray and I declare that the Lord God Almighty will give you peace. Mm. The Spirit of the Most High God will enable your decision. Your decision will not be motivated by any other thing but the word of God. Bible says a right yes, thing divides the truth. The word of the Lord cannot, cannot, cannot be faulted. I pray mm. that God will help you to stand upon his word. In the name mm. of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I declare the Lord of new seasons. Let the Lord take you to a new season in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I pray that whatever is not good for you, the Lord will not make it possible. Whatever is good for your destiny, yes, that is what the Lord will yes, make Lord. possible for you in the name of Jesus. Every outside influence, every outside arrow, we reject it for your life in the name of Jesus. I cover your decision with the blood of Jesus. I cover your life with the blood of Jesus. I cover your 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 spirit, your thoughts. I cover it. Your mind. I cover it. That mind that has become the battleground for the enemy. I cover it with the blood of Jesus. And I pray that you'll be able to stand by sound doctrine, and you will not listen. To, to contrary voices in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord, I just cover all the job of your children with the blood of Jesus. I cover their path with the blood of Jesus. Even I pray for wisdom for that brother whose best friend is, 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 uh, is uh, LB from the LBGT community. We know that God, you still love them. But I pray in the name of Jesus, grant him the wisdom to be able to break, break this topic and be at peace with himself. Mm. We thank you, almighty God, for who you are. Thank you for the meeting of today. Even we lift up next week unto you. The Lord God Almighty, as we have connected with you in the spirit, the Father, you will connect with us. Come and teach us. Love, we don't want to hear men, but we want to hear you speak through men. Amen. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you dominion and majesty. Grant us a peaceful Sunday as we, as we reflect in you. Lord, I pray for somebody that is aching, having aching muscles, you know, struggling with this ailment. The Amen. Father, the spirit of the most high God that heals. Man can only cure. 
They can only treat. They give us all manners of things to treat us. But you are the one that kills and heals completely. I pray for that man to, to fall upon your children in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you for you are God. We magnify your name. Blessed be your name, almighty God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Unmute yourself where you are and shout a seven hallelujah, which will signify your victory. Hallelujah. Unmute yourself yes. where yes. you are. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Yes. Come on. Okay. We're getting we ready for everybody to Shall unmute. We yeah. We're getting we'll ready for everybody yes. to unmute. Yes. Yes. Getting yes. ready for everybody to unmute. Hallelujah. Unmute yourself. Bless you. Bless you. Glorious hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless today. Yes, that is glorious hallelujah. Glorious hallelujah. Now that we are ready, we want to go. Hallelujah. Tomorrow night at the same time. Maybe, maybe you would have come tomorrow night and give us some victory and some praise reports and some testimonies within 24 hours. I pray and challenge you. As Philippians 1 9 says, and it's my prayer that your love may abound more and more uh, Amen. with knowledge and all discernment, Amen. so that you may approve what is excellent. Mm. And so be pure and blameless for the day Amen. of Christ. Father, Amen. we thank you for a beauty of a unity of the gathering of the saints. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord, as we cover us. Cover us with your anointing. Fill us up with a fresh right now of the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Let that fresh anointing, fresh fire come into us right now. Lord, that we will be right with mm -hmm. you. And the other thing that we need to do is, you know, the Holy Spirit prompted me to tell you, if you want to hear from God, then you're going to need to slow down and be in that place of silent to him. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, some of us, he said to Hallelujah. me, some of us are too busy running here, running there, running here and everywhere. We just need to have that time with him. Yeah, alone, that peace that surpasses own understanding so that we can hear mm -hmm. clearly from him amen from God. you know unfortunately my life's so busy but i tell you what my house from 11 o'clock to six o'clock you can't hear a thing it's a great time hallelujah sometimes <laughs> you've got to go out of your comfort zone to get the peace and clarity that you need hallelujah i used to go I mean, to I all mean, sorts of places all sorts of hours to get all sorts of things so if I have to wake up at two, three o'clock in the morning to get some peace and clarity and some direction from my God, then I'm going to do it. Hallelujah. God bless you all. God bless you. Have a wonderful Amen. evening. <laughs> what a wonderful Amen. God bless you. God bless, bless you. you. What a lovely word, Pastor. We talk. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yeah, sure, Hallelujah. sure. Yeah, we talk. We talk, we talk, we talk. Yes, Leo. God bless you. Bless Have a you wonderful later. evening, all. Bye for now. Oh. John, bless you, brother. God bless, guys. God bless you, man. Thanks, Pastor. Amy, Thanks, Ava. Sister Amy, bless nice you. Nice one. Good to see you. you. Bless you in the name of Jesus. Bless Amen. you all in the name of Jesus. Bless you. Bless